Good evening. The Invercargill Police have given up trying to tear down the walls around a local gang headquarters in the meantime. The concrete block fortifications of the Devil's Henchmen and Preston Street have been a sore point with the police. For two years they've talked about court action to have them pulled down. But now the gang-owned property is up for sale and the police say they'll wait to see what happens. Action on a second Invercargill gang headquarters is also held up, pending a court appeal over a similar case in Wellington. Police say a shotgun they recovered from near a gang headquarters was not the one used in an attack on a South Dunedin woman early this month. Forensic tests were carried out on several guns seized in a raid after 25-year-old Jacqueline Scholes was shot in the back. But police have found three of the firearms they seized in that raid were stolen from a Sawyer's Bay home in January. They still want to find the other missing guns. The long-running Southland debate over the merits or demerits of plastic milk bottles has surfaced again. But this time it's a burning issue. Michael Lynch reports. Plastic bottles have come in for this year of criticism in the South. But back in March, the local milk company took out full-page newspaper advertisements justifying its refusal to retain glass bottles. The scheme backfired. This clause, saying the bottles make good and harmless fire lighters, drew the ire of Manipuri man Lance Shaw. He complained to the Commerce Commission. And now the company's been required to print full-page retractions. Simply, burning plastic is not a good idea. The milk company management was not available for comment today. Our bottles are still littering up in Vicargo and we can't think of much to do with them, so in the meantime, don't burn them. Dump them. In Vicargo's Haysom Metal Industries is facing problems again. This time, it's not the noise from the factory, but what to do with the thousands of tonnes of waste it produces. As Michael Lynch reports, nobody wants it. Haysom's refining furnace dross from the TY aluminium smelter simply doesn't know where to go with its waste. It's faced with storing thousands of tons in Invercargill warehouses because no one will let the waste be dumped. Invercargill dumps right out. The city's works department gave an emphatic no last night to a Haysom's plea to put it there. No one will say exactly how noxious the waste is, but the council doesn't want the risk of it polluting the fragile estuary. Likewise, it's not popular in former rural dumping sites. In the meantime, we're getting an unspecified amount of waste material stuffed into unspecified warehouses around the city. Can it keep going on? Well, obviously it can't. Um, in, in my view, there's uh, something in the order of 17,000 tonnes of this material to be processed. I mean, I don't really think we've got the storage capacity to, to, to cater for that. But, in theory, you might have to just keep putting it into warehouses if you let this company keep on processing. Uh, that's being looked at. I'm not sure where it's at. It may be three months before a decision's made. That's 3,000 tonnes of waste to pile up. After all that, is there anything good to report about waste? Mark Price says there is. He's been talking to some math scientists who are setting out to prove their money, there is money in muck. They're about to take control of a small part of the Australian effluent market and they're planning to do it from their base out on the tidy. The humble telephone is a vital link in MAF's plans to provide an Australian meat company with a wastewater treatment plant. MAF says it can not only build the plant, but can run it by phone from here on the Tari Plains. The uh, client is normally uh, interested in getting rid of their waste and have an environmentally sound solution for waste treatment. They're not really that interested in operating a plant, a waste treatment plant, which may be quite uh, specialistic. So the benefit is, is that we guarantee good performance, hassle-free solution for their waste uh, system. Dr Cohen's pilot system is about to be installed in the Australian factory. It includes the usual things like pumps, pipes and a digester where bacteria converts effluent to gas. But there are also sensors and some sophisticated electronics which will keep track of effluent flows, temperature and gas composition. All these things can be adjusted either automatically or with a simple telephone call from New Zealand. We can't really uh, provide the manpower to go all over the world. Uh, we try to get the, uh, we've got expert staff here who can uh, control these systems. And if by doing it centrally here, we have much better control over systems rather than sending people there or training 
personnel on factory sites. MAF hopes the pilot system will lead on to an order for a system a hundred times bigger, but still controlled from Invermay. And by the way, if anything goes wrong in Australia, Dr Cohen gets a phone call from his effluent plant, which has been programmed not to ring him in the middle of the night. Very sensible. Now a progress report on the state of Dunedin's educational facilities. The buildings, that is, not the teaching. There's been a lot of love and money lavished on the historic Otago Girls High School and some impressive modern school buildings are going up too. Cathy Graham's been checking them out. This brand new school's on a prime site just above the city centre. St Joseph's Cathedral School will cater for about 100 pupils, from new entrance to standard four. It's been designed around two elegant trees, one a tortured elm, and will feature many more thanks to the Parent Teachers Association, which has taken an active part in landscaping. Today, builders were preparing for the school's opening on Friday. The new Otago girls' classrooms are a little further away. They'll be ready in September. The same architects have designed the new school. The challenge here has been to blend the new with the old. Phase one, which is this three-storey block of eight classrooms, is costing about three million dollars. Phase two, which is due to follow on, will be strengthening and upgrading the old part of the school. Another three million dollars. And brand new facilities are also being provided for students at the Otago Polytechnic and Teachers College. They'll share this new building. It's due to open in September as well. There will be a cafeteria and various student services, including a nurse and a counsellor. And what's going on top? It's a clock tower, so there's no excuse for anyone to be late for class. That's telling them, Cathy. A group of school children led by Otago University Maths Professor Derek Holton has won a couple of bronze medals at the International Maths Olympiad in Beijing. The professor says this year's exam was harder than last year's, but the young New Zealanders still improve their place. Success too for Invercargill's Verdon College Choir, which is off to Wellington next month to sing with the ten best school choirs in the country. It's the first time a southern choir has been chosen for the National Secondary School's Choral Festival. Here it is singing Dormi Yesu by Dunedin composer David Griffiths. Lovely, the Verdon College Choir conducted by Di Lenehan. And best of luck for the festival. We'll be back tomorrow. Good night.